Hello guys, welcome back to the bench. And today, instead of testing out some paints, I've gotten a few requests on how I clean my airbrush uh, between colors. Uh, not so much a thorough cleaning, but going between colors. And um, I'll show that today. And uh, I'll show it on two different airbrushes because each one has a slightly different method. I will, uh, I'm gonna use this demo using my uh, GSI Creos PS270. And, oops, and I'm going to show it with my Badger 105 Patriot. Um, so I will do two kinds of paint. I'll use this uh, gloss black base from All Clad, a lacquer. And we're just going to throw that in there because it's pre mix It's easy. Which I just want to put a couple drops just to show you guys how to clean it out. And uh, I'll use this Game Air from Vallejo. And uh, same reason. We're just going to put it in. I don't have to thin it or any of that stuff. Um, I'm planning on a thinning video too to show you guys how I thin all my paints. Uh, at this point I do it by eye so uh, I want to give you guys a little in-depth look on that too. But for now, without thinning, we're just going to show quickly how I clean out the airbrushes between colors. Then I'll show you what I do at the end of the session. I'm not going to do a full breakdown and cleaning like I do through my ultrasonic cleaner. That'll be a separate video. This is just so you guys know how you're going to clean your airbrush when you want to do three four colors in a row like I do when I do the spoons and I'm doing like a, a paint test for you guys I'm I'm testing you know two three four bottles of different colors I actually do it all on the fly and uh, I actually just pause the video and come back and I'm only away for like two minutes one minute that's how long it takes me I've gotten this down pretty quick and that's what I want to show you guys here um, I keep myself always in stock acetone lacquer thinner now this is the basic stuff not for thinning but I use it for cleaning here's the acetone and the tin cans hold on one second there's the lacquer I use both of these um, for cleaning the airbrush uh, I do like to put a shot of acetone through at the very end just a couple drops now um, a lot of people are worried about using a solvent in their airbrush and ruining it um, most if not all of my airbrushes have solvent resistant seals um this one's going on two years of use you've guys seen me use this constantly on the ch channel and the and um i tore this down not too long ago and the seals look like brand new so you're gonna go quite a ways using these the seals for this are like two bucks three bucks i think spray gunner has them so the replacing them is cheap anyway if you're gonna get two three four years out of them uh it does and that's using i i i splash acetone and lacquer through these things constantly on a weekly basis no problem even the new badgers have um solvent resistant seals in them so you guys should have a problem spraying this stuff through it anyway for this i'm going to use my these are gun cleaning they actually are listed as gun cleaning q-tips one end is pointy one is rounded i love these things and they're pretty inexpensive i'll have a link below uh, on Amazon where I got them uh, any uh, I have tons of acrylic uh, airbrush cleaners these are media uh, you get both of these I got actually I got these at uh, Hobby Lobby particularly the spray uh, the spray one which is really good it, it cleans out the cup really well so that's an easy to get local airbrush cleaner with uh, and I'll even shoot some of my homemade airbrush cleaner I put a C on it so that tells me this is my cleaner I had a video on this you guys saw it not too long ago on how to make your own it works really good and I also put this in a spray bottle so I have it in both forms just like that this is easy too I got this at the tattoo shop uh, in my neighborhood a supply store and, and you just squeeze it into the cup just while you're holding it like that you don't have to open up any caps or anything it's always ready to go so that I like to use too um, you're gonna need a spray jar. Um, this comes; it keeps it sealed for the water from evaporating. This is a uh, filter, so it filters out uh, the chemicals. You just hold this up. I'll even shoot probably the paint into here. You're gonna put some water in it, half inch, inch of water. It captures everything and keeps it in there. Uh, I go about six months before I even get rid of this. So uh, these come in really handy. If you don't have one, you can always use a paper towel and just blast everything into the paper towel um, we're gonna need my I use this over and over for my solvents this is my uh, drippers my pipettes hold on a second guys if I bump it into the camera 
I label them lacquered. I label them acrylic so I can use them over and over again. Again, I got those by the hundreds on Amazon for like five bucks or ten bucks with shipping included. It can't be beat. So uh, I'll put a link for all this stuff. This is from Badger. This is uh, Reg Dab. It's Badger spelled backwards. It's needle juice. It is a uh, it's a uh, an oil that you put on it, a lubricant, and you put it on the needle and wipe it off mostly and just put it in, and it keeps the paint smoothly going by. It keeps the parts going. You can just use it. Use a uh, Q-tip. Use a uh, toothpick. Just use a toothpick and dab some on, and put it on all the moving parts. And uh, don't have to do that that often. Just a few times a year. Keeps the brush running good. Now for cleaning, I also like to use these. These are uh, is it gum? Yeah. These are uh, these are for your teeth. So they're pretty sensitive. They come in multiple sizes. You can see that right there for sure. The red, and then they're color coded. I got these at Walmart, and uh, these fit perfectly. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. And these fit perfectly uh, in the cup but when the needle is out. It goes right in there and it cleans it out. These are fantastic. Uh, they last quite a while. Once I'm done, I'll, I'll rinse it out a little bit in the acetone or the lacquer thinner or the hot water, depends on what we're doing. And these uh, pipe cleaners, these airbrush cleaners, every time I place an order with Spray Gunner, they include a set of these. They have different sizes. I don't know what they're sending me as far as size goes, but this is perfect for uh, going through the front of the Badger. I'll show you that in a second. It's a different style of nozzle than it is on here, and that's why it's kind of made for these. And um, that's pretty much it for the acrylics. I showed you the cleaner. I'm also gonna flush it with this. This is hot water. I just brewed this in my uh, Keurig. My K cup brewer. I keep the lid on it because it keeps it really warm. Um, when it first brews, it comes out at 180 degrees. It doesn't seem to harm the airbrush at all. Like I said, I've checked it and uh, it looks like the day I got it. So the hot water is fine. It's not going to harm the seals uh, at all. So uh, that's all. Let's go ahead and I'm going to show you guys. Uh, put a little paint in uh, one or two of these and we'll show you um, how to clean it out. So let me get my airbrush compressor going and I'll be right back. All right, guys, here we go. We'll start with the uh, GSI 270. I shook this up already. We're only going to put a few drops. Just because we want to just show you how to clean out the airbrush quick and easy. We don't have to fill it up and waste the paint. Let me get this uh, out of the way. All right. Okay. Now, it's in. I'll show you. All right, we're already spraying. Get the holder out of the way. Yeah. You can see the paint is in there and we are spraying. Let's get some light over that. There we go. And that's it. I will, uh, you know, I'll spray a spoon or whatever I got to do for the video. And um, but I got to change the color. And that's what we're going to show you right now. Okay. So basically, we're going to start with lacquer thinner. We're going to match whatever the paint is. So we're going to go in. I'm gonna put some in. That's it. That's it. Now, what I like to do is I like to get my Q-tips that I have, my gun cleaning tips, and I'm just gonna swirl the cup quick. Can you see what I'm doing? I'm getting the edges of the cup, all the paint that would be, you know, stuck on the cup. I'll blast this a little bit. You're gonna see it's still dark because we're basically just thinning the paint at this point. You know, and I'm gonna dump it out. I keep a rag below the, in a bucket below me my desk right here now it's already dumped out we're gonna blast some through I think that's it that's the first shot second shot now another swig I'll call it another swig it's in there here's what you're gonna do on the second shot all right you're gonna loosen right here can you see it not this tip one that's the protector for the nozzle right here the second one in on this particular airbrush it, it breaks the seal between the air airbrush, the air comes in, and the, the needle and the nozzle. Now, it stops right here, the air, and goes back in. And now, I'm just, just pushing it. I'm not even spraying anything. But now, look at it. It's churning up. Now, we're backwashing back into the cup and really 
cleaning out anything that is in between the cup that we can't quite reach. And if you get a bigger splash, just keep your, a rag over it. Nothing's really splashing up. And with this particular uh, airbrush, you can open the air right up if you want. And that's it. Now, I don't like to flush this back in because it's, it's already dirty thinner that we flushed backwards. You know, so I will dump that in my rag under my bench. All right, I'm gonna close the nozzle. It's dumped out. You know, there's gonna be a little bit in here. All right, I'm gonna wipe the cup. I'd like to give it one more shot. I usually do the acetone at the end. Don't have to use a lot. You know, and sometimes I will use the rag and cover it up and blow it through. And just that backlash of the air coming out into the rag hits the needle itself. Now we don't have to go crazy and clean the needle um, to a really done painting. But I'm going to show you how clean we are right now. You saw it two minutes ago. All right, now this is wet. It's wet. But it's spraying out yeah, the clean acetone. It's totally clean. We are ready for the next color. Completely ready for the next color. You're going to spray <clears throat> your light colors first. I did black because black is great for the camera. But you're going to spray your whites, your grays, blues, everything lighter to darker if you want to spray multiple times in the session. So be sure you start with your whites, your yellows, and go into reds and go gradually darker. If you're going to spray black, dark grays, do it last, okay? Now, I'm showing you this because I'm on camera, but when I'm uh, doing this and you guys... Uh, when I pause the camera, this is what I use. I'll just blast it in here till it's gone. And that's it. It's completely dry. It's out. It's ready to go. You can give it one more wipe if you want. All right. So I'll show you at the very end how we're going to clean it thoroughly out. But this is perfect. This rear brush is ready for its next color. You know, we're not going to go into the deep cleanings yet. This is between color cleanings. And that's a between color clean. Now let's move on to the Badger. And with the Badger, we're going to, I'm using my quick release. With the Badger, we're going to show you an acrylic. So this will be a little different. I'm shaking this off camera. All right, we're just gonna put a couple of drops in just to show you the, the, the method of it all. All right, it's in. Always clean the tips off your bottles. All right, now we're in. All right, let me get a fresh paper towel. I keep a paper towel on a rack mounted under my bench. It's always within reach. I have a paper towel at each corner of my room. You just buy them at the dollar store. And that's how you save your money on them. And there we go. Now we're, we're spraying uh, Vallejo model color red. That's it. Now you're gonna get tip dry on this. See the tip's already red? So, I'll show you what we're going to do with that. Anyway, we're blasting it out. We want to clean it out. Same method, slightly different. We're going to go in with the hot water first. So we're going to get the lid off of this baby. We don't need it right now. Let me put it on the camera stand behind me. All right, here we go. Now let me get another pipette. We're going to throw some hot water in here. Don't drink that water. Same thing, we're gonna take the end, pick another end, and I'm gonna swirl it. Let's get this hot water out of here. That is hot. And we're gonna swirl the edges because I wanna get it off the edge of the cup. Now you can come in a little bit, circle around between your fingers because you're gonna hit the needle at that point. All right, this will be spent as far as that Q-tip goes, you can actually just dump this out into your paper towel, this hot water. I'm gonna blow some through. All right, that's my first shot. Now, second shot, what I wanna do is, I'm gonna use either of these. I can use this quick. We'll show you what I mean by a nice spray. See it, it foams up really nice. See it? If you guys don't have the, the uh, Q-tips I showed you, get these. Use these makeup Q-tips, not regular Q-tips. They'll, uh, they're a little tighter wound. Again, I'm gonna do this whirl around. Once again, fresh paper towel. 
Now we're gonna go back to the jar. It's all the same, but just we're using different chemicals this time is what we're doing. That's all. Okay, we're gonna do the same idea. We're gonna back flush it, but it's gonna be a little different. We'll use this just to show you guys. I'm gonna use all different types of cleaners here. Okay, we're already blowing through clean because the hot water really did its job. All right, so it's already coming through clean, but you'd be surprised. Now with this particular one, you can unscrew it, do the same method, you know, but these also come with these caps, most of the badgers. So just gonna put the cap on and we're gonna hold it. Same thing. All right, now with this, you can do the same thing as I said. You're gonna hold the front because it'll shoot off like a Nerf gun. You don't want that. Hold it in and then come over the top with the paper towel and just blast her out. And that's it. Now we're going to dump out the rest, do another wipe. We should be good to go. And it's still a little red, and that's because, see it? It's an acrylic, which usually builds up on the front. So with that, I'm going to show you what we're going to use. We're going to use a brush. Let me show you one second. Hold on, guys. Let me get the brush. It's behind me. All right. I get these brushes. They're not super cheap because then you'll you'll make a mess with uh, cheap bristles this is actually a good cheap brush from Hobby Lobby you just want to dip it in anything you can use your spray or you can actually use the hot, the hot water and you're just gonna run the needle through it like such and um, that'll do it for you now also I like to as I said even if it's an acrylic I like to get a little bit of acetone shot through it the acetone clears it right out and it dries it quick too it's good for an in-between shot now we'll, there's nothing coming out now this whole process takes me a minute because I've got it down so well in uh, from doing these videos and doing six colors at a time you know ten colors sometimes off camera I'll do you see me like 10 15 colors and um, it really doesn't take me all day because I've been cleaning the airbrush as you've seen it now at the end of your session and you want to give it a good cleaning but not a breakdown when I'm done at the end I will just take this off now with this some people like to pull the needle forward I'll do that on occasion eh, they say it'll back up but I, I've gone pretty long time without any trouble with doing a good cleaning between I, you could pull it out the back this one has to go out the back because it's got this end on the needle now with this particular airbrush Keep your finger on the on the trigger so you don't want to lose it and you don't have to undo anything you're just going to loosen this and that's your needle holder and it's got a nice handle on it so you're going to pull the needle out and there's all your red see it now this is actually dry it doesn't interfere with the paint into the next session because it goes right by it you know when you guys see me painting i've done what i just did and you can't even tell what the color is before it. it's just how it goes you just want to get it clean and dry for your next session now with this it doesn't matter what we're going to clean it with it was an acrylic we can hit the hot water see it yeah like a coffee stirrer in the hot water get it nice and clean the needles a little dirty put it in the tip don't go forward and poke your hand off it's happened to all of us uh, it's the old live and learn adage and uh, watch my other video on how I sharpen the tips and um well let me show you something else in this guys let me show you something else okay now with the needle out all right we're going to clean the front we are going to clean the front all right just put some of the cleaner on the q-tip and you're just going to roll it around the front do the old twist and that'll clean out the front and also you can take the tip off and I like to soak these overnight, you know, once a week or so, in a little shot glass of acetone. You know, just I put them both in there, and I wake up in the morning, they're all cleaned out. You know, you dry them off, you put them right back on. All right. Now for the uh, the other part of these badgers, these are a one piece. Let me show you the nozzle. They're pretty unique and simple. A lot of companies are using this technique now. See it. 
that's the whole nozzle right there. It, this does most of your work. And uh, with this, you can either get your little uh, pipe cleaners that he sent me. I have this. Check this out. Can you see it? You put her in. You don't give it much pressure at all. You're just going to twist it. If there's anything caked inside, this little laser pointer right here, baby, takes it right out. This was actually, I think this was uh, invented by, I want to say, Harder and Steinbeck airbrushes. So this is a copy of that. This is a, I think this is a no-name brand from, uh, from Spray Gunner. So you're going to do that. You don't have to do this maybe once a month. I don't go crazy taking the whole nozzle off. And on these, it's really, really easy um, to clean them out. Once you get the front off on these, you can use these tools. See that? It goes right in. And look. Yeah, right into the cup. And you can get them from the inside if you want. You can even get the smaller one and go backwards this way. If you want to go way further into the airbrush, you can get these much smaller pipe cleaners. Uh, some guys say they'll mark up the insides. I've had no trouble. And that'll get you further inside to the piece. When you do a full breakdown, I'll do a video on that. I'll show you guys how to clean the whole thing out. But with these, you just stack the needle back up, put the nozzle back on the front, and you are ready to go. I would This, this is what I do quickly at the end of my session after I did the between color cleanouts. And uh, with that, you're good to go. You know, the needle, you got to be careful on the little uh, trigger here. Oh, I got it back right there. I'm going to push this in. Get it as far as it goes. You're ready to go. All right. I'm not going to go into the maintenance part with using the needle juice, but like I says, all you got to do is put a dab. I'll show it maybe on that and rub some on the needle. As for your weekly maintenance later on, you can go into the other pieces maybe once or twice a year is all I will do. Now let's show you what we're going to do with this one. At the end of my session, we're going to take the back off. Loosen the needle, comes right out, and that's what we're left with. The same idea here, except we can go from the inside, and look at that, it fits right in. All right, again, these are for your teeth. You'll find them in the dental aisle at your store, and they do a good job. They last me a long time, too. They're really as sensitive as they are because they're made for your teeth. They do a great job. And um, on these, really, you're just going to wipe. Yeah, what I'll do is I'll, I'll put some acetone on it. And just rub it off and you're not going to get a lot of uh, paint build up for a while if you keep it lubed up with this believe it or not I like to put a dab in the paper towel and then I'm going to rub this through it spin it and that's it it feels like it's not really lubed up you don't want a ton of oil on it it will affect the paint you can even rub it off really well, but it, it keeps a really thin coating. It's what this is made for. You're not going to notice any difference in your paint at all. None whatsoever. So that's ready to go. Really a low-maintenance brush. I, I love it just for that reason. I actually enjoy cleaning it. it it's, it's, it's such a pleasure to work with. With the end nozzle, you're going to build up some paint. So we're going to take this off. And what we're going to do now is you're going to dip the pointed end into the acetone or the lacquer, it depends, it doesn't matter. See it? Now we're going to go straight in and we're going to rotate it like that. See it? So just keep your finger on it, spin it around, you're going to see it's a little dirty. Look at that. It's as clean as can be. If you're missing some areas, switch it to the fatter side, spin it again. The acetone dries instantly. There you go. Wash your hands, of course, once we are done. And that's it. And that's it. That's how I clean quickly between colors. And um, when you've done all what I just did, if you want, you can even go back, you know, put it back into your air sauce if you want to blast, you know, just a couple of drops of acetone in it. Anything you might have loosened up is now, you know, blown out. And that's it. You are good to go. A lot of times I will wipe the cup and then use the rag and wipe the outside of these. These new chrome airbrushes, they last forever. This chrome is really plated on here well. The amount of times I've been using this brush, 
and look at it. it. I mean, it looks like the day I bought it. It's just fantastic. Just a great airbrush. And that's it. Hold on, guys. Let me turn off the compressor. And uh, that's the basics. That's how I clean between colors. It's that easy. Cap on the front of the uh, Badger. You can loosen it, but it's a little harder to do. This one, you loosen the front. You can also cap the front of these uh, GSI Creos also. You know, don't forget to close everything off when you're done. Close off your gun. I keep these in these nice jars and that uh, lacquer thinner lasts forever. I keep the shot glass by. I keep that. I use this over and over and over. And uh, all these tools you see here are below me on a cart made for a, a inkjet printer. And it's on wheels and I can pull it in and out when I work on my uh, airbrushing and I just wheel it back. I keep it pulled out and I'm cleaning the whole time, you know, I'm cleaning more than airbrushing. But at this point, like I said, it's a pleasure. Once you get it down, it, it's it's actually a, a meaningless task. It, it, it doesn't bother me at all. I actually enjoy it knowing I get it done. Sometimes when I break it down, it's like I'm building a model and going to build it back up. But anyway, that was it. I told you guys this was going to be a quick, easy video on how I clean the colors out between uh, between airbrushing colors and that's it it's that simple I'll put a link below for everything you've seen here uh, if I can find it I'll link it down as if I can I'll even see if they still got these in stock a little nozzle cleaner for the Badgers and the uh, Harder and Steinbecks I'll look for the links for these and uh, anything else I can think of I'll put below and uh, that's it guys that is it I'm thinking of my next video or a video coming up anyway was thinking of these old die cast cars I found uh, this had racing colors on it matter of fact it only has one seat in it you can see it, it must have been a rally car it must have had all the decals on it maybe the Marlboro I'm not sure but I'm thinking of um, stripping this down and painting it and I also have this old um, Ferrari looks like uh, when I was a kid I had to have all the trim done so I painted all the little details I go back so far we didn't have panel lining liquid but this has a little motor in it and everything. But I'm thinking of taking it apart and stripping the paint and then painting them with these duplicolor car colors with the, the primer and maybe the red and the blues. Um, I was looking for a way to strip the paint. So I might do this with a paint stripper. You dip it in and I might sandblast one of them as my brother has a machine shop. And I asked him what he recommended for a liquid. And he said he'll sandblast it. And I said, I don't know if that'll work for the video, but maybe what I'll do is I will do on video one paint stripper, one sandblaster. And I'll even take you to the shop and maybe we'll film it being sandblasted. And uh, we'll look at the nice results on that. So I'm thinking of doing that. It'd be something different. Um, something different for you guys. And anyway, I got a new airbrush coming in the mail, a new Grex. We're going to be testing that. I have um, a whole set of Badger paints, the Freak Flex, all them. Um... Apparently the company never shipped them, and I called and complained. It was weeks since you guys saw me test that spoon. And um, they finally uh, reshipped and sent me my giant package of paints. So that paint test is coming up. And currently what I'm doing is uh, I'm testing my paint out for my own personal paint lineup. Um, this is the blue that I want. This is uh, a flame red it's called. We're going to call this my orange. So far I like these. There's a little heads up look at this graphite is that a beautiful color this is a graphite color hold on let me show it on the spoon see it I'm working on that here is a green can you see it beautiful here is a titanium silver look at that so I got several colors that we are working on hold on I think I got a blue here look at this look at that but uh, I do like the metal colors, and that's the one that I'm um, really focusing on. Here is a uh, green gold. Here is a teal color. But mostly I want to work on... Oops, sorry guys, I'm leaning back here on the camera. Uh, here, is, uh, here we go. All right. I'm working on an anodized lineup where uh, this will be tinted green. Can you see it? This is red. I'm going to get them a little more tinted, and that's what I'm working on now. So you can see the colors right there, the green and the red. And this is a bare metal color um, that I've settled on. Look how nice. It's, it looks good over different surfaces. This is over black. 
it's not a chrome it's it's just it's a bare metal that's all it is it's just bare metal and it depends what you spray it over you're gonna get different results this is a lacquer these others I've been showing you are enamels uh, we're choosing enamels because you can brush paint them beautifully and you can airbrush them whereas the lacquers will be airbrush only and they're uh, going for a dual purpose there but anyway guys that's a little update for you anyway uh, use these techniques in cleaning your airbrush between colors you shouldn't have any problem at all and um, and I hope this helps you guys if you have any questions you know uh, leave a comment below I answer all the questions uh, that are asked of me and again guys please like the video it helps a lot for the channel and uh, please subscribe if you haven't already we have a ton more videos to go several years worth we're just getting started here and uh, thank you guys on our trip to 30,000 subscribers. It's been such a joy. And I, I so appreciate you guys. And um, with that, have a great weekend. And we'll see you in the next video.